flies in the buttermilk, shoot, fly, shoot. Flies in the buttermilk, shoot, fly, shoot. Flies in the buttermilk, shoot, fly, shoot. Skip to Maloo, my darling Lulu. Skip to Maloo, Lulu. Skip to Maloo, Lulu. Skip to Maloo, skip to Maloo, my darling. And I lost my little girl, what'll I do? Lost my little girl, what'll I do? Lost my little girl, what'll I do? I skip to Maloo, my darling my foot three years ago. Well, you know, getting bit and getting married is pretty much the same thing. Both of them can scar up a fellow. <laughs> oh, that's a fine thing to say to a young couple on the verge of matrimony. Somebody's got to warn the innocent. You can still change your mind if you want to, Mason Pruitt. Uh-uh. I've been bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I say you're both mighty fortunate. You ever think about getting married? Sometimes. Now, why don't you? I wore chains once. Didn't take too kindly to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so sweet of you and Daniel to, to help us celebrate, Rebecca. Amy, you and Mason are two of our most favorite people. Having you married and settled down as neighbors is something we think pretty wonderful. You know, he's a mighty fine fellow. Now, there's no need to give him a big head. Besides, he's not doing too poorly. <laughs> I say he's doing real well. <laughs> Poor Daniel. Yeah, please, sir. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Business always interfering with pleasure. Abraham, strike up a tune. Ain't nobody here to hear you slurp that cider. All right, now, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Rum. Put us up. Again, how long are you going to stay? Till we leave. Hmm. Somebody, uh, partying? That young couple dancing over there is going to get married. I'd like to buy a drink for the newlyweds. They ain't wed yet. What is the reason? No start, nothing, anchor. Given a chance, I would. <laughs> You're the lucky fella, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, one down on me. Thanks. You gonna drink to this nice young couple? Good luck, miss. Thank you. Hey, swing around, Mason. You can rest up after the wedding. We'll go get our packs. Well, come on, then. Let's dance. Mason? Amy, go back inside. What's the matter? Amy, please. Mason, I don't understand. I'll be right in. Please, tell me. Look, Amy, when there's something to tell you, I'll tell you. Now go back inside. Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man. He 
was brave, he was fearless, and as tough as a mighty oak tree. From the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his raw high shoe. The rippin'est, roarin'est, fightin'est man the frontier ever knew. people were sleeping up there in that room last night? Why don't you count their legs and divide by two? You're so curious. Uh, I ain't. That take care of it? Mm hmm. Rustle you up some grub? Now, let's get out of here. Now, what's eating you? Where are you from? Nosy, huh? Curious. Why? You ever been on the Cumberland? We've been there and other places. We'll move around. A town called Shelby? Never heard of it. Sonny, be ashamed to widow that nice young girl before she's even wifed. Good morning, Mason. Something wrong? No, nothing wrong. All those men? Hey, I can't spot the granddad of all turkeys down by the river rapids. Fat and juicy strutting around boasting how he's the only bird in Kentucky fit for a wedding feast, and we don't aim to disappoint him. An early time is the best time for a turkey hunt. How do you know that? When the sun gets hot, the turkeys eat a lot. And when the sun gets high, turkeys on the fly. You got mighty unsocial all of a sudden last night. Just not the partying kind, I guess. chip on his shoulder. Now let's move on. Move on? We've got pelts to sell. And we can do that in Salem. Now why haul him all the way there? Shelby. What about Shelby? Nothing. Hanker, let's get out of here. Well, I don't see no reason to. None at all. You do as you please. I'm getting out. Smith, what's wrong with you? You got flutter gut. Face up to it, Hanker. We don't want nothing behind us catching up. But that boy... I don't know nothing about that boy. I don't want to know. Yeah. I got flutter cut. It's your party. Uh, since killing just for the use of killing. The party. I don't figure it'll be any party. It's not for a while. Gabe, you got any lion fish hooks? Never without. You and Israel catch a mess of trout. Becky'd like that. But, Pa. Come on, Israel. That's a pool down the way. Got trout so big, they feed on beaver steak. Trout is in beaver steak? Come on, I'll show you. Mason? may need this. Thanks. Oh, 
How far back can you remember? It's a strange question. I mean, 10 years, 15 years? There might be some before. It might be jumbled up a bit. I can tell you my first clear memory. It was this high hill called Penn's Mount. We lived close by it, Holy Township. That's where the Skook Hill nudges its way out of the mountains and settles in for its run to the sea. One day, my dad took me to the top of that summit. I was maybe nine, ten years old. First time I could see over and beyond the mountain. What a sight. Mountains and valleys trundling west. Seemed like there was no end to it, like they went on forever. And there'll never be enough years for me to forget that. Every time I crest a mountain, I think back to it. Oh, it's good to remember, Dan. You're lucky. You know, the first thing that sticks in my mind, my first memory, nothing like yours. Nothing at all like yours. I was a kid then, like you, about nine. I had a birthday the week before, but I don't remember that. What I do remember is a knife and a scream. We was down on the Cumberland, a township called Shelby. Our pa, he trapped a little, farmed a little. He bothered nobody. Why they came on us, I don't know. It was two of them. He was drunk, fighting mad. Shouting and shooting. And my pie hid me in this potato bin. And I, I saw the face. When he turned his horse. He had this pitchfork mark from his eye to his lip. Well, that's what I remember, Daniel. It's the first thing I remember. Killed both of them, my ma and my pa. Sometimes a day passes, but never a night when I don't see it all happening again. Then I've been looking at faces for 15 years for that pitchfork mark. And last night I saw it again. Here's Mason, how can you be sure? How many men you know carry a mark like that? One man has one, another one can. He's the one. There ain't no other. But you tell me. What are you going to do about it? I don't know, Dan. But I know what you're going to say. I know exactly what you're going to say. Think on it, Mason. Don't go off half-cocked. Don't try and handle it yourself. To the word. Well, who else is going to handle it for me? So we got the law. For something that happened 15 years ago. No witnesses. My word against theirs. Daniel, I don't know much about the law, but I do know they'd walk out of any courthouse as free as birds. Probably. What do you suggest? Just this. In trying to get at him, don't trap yourself. Well, that's some advice. Someone else involved in this. Amy. Yeah, Daniel, I don't pretend to be as wise as you and know what you know. But there's this juice that runs in a man that goes right through to his bones. It says payback. And not you, not Amy, not anybody in the world can turn it off. I'm going to get that man with a pitchfork marked in. Pay back. Mason. Daniel told me. Couldn't 
you tell me yourself? Amy, what's the difference? When you asked me to marry, you asked me to share. Amy, you can't share what's past. But this isn't past, Mason. It's with you now, always will be. I understand that. Amy, this is for me alone. What are you going to do? That's pretty obvious, isn't it? You can't do this to me, Mason Pruitt. You can't shove me aside like a dish of gruel that you're through with. I won't let you do this. I'm not shoving you aside, Amy. I've got to handle this myself, that's all. And we're not even going to talk about it. No. You take the law into your own hands, Mason, and right or wrong, you're a marked man. You're scarred, just like the man you're after. Look, I'm scarred already knowing they've done it and breathing free. What if you're wrong? Well, I'm not wrong. They could just look like the men you saw, Mason. Memory plays tricks. It was like it happened yesterday. That's as clear as I see it. If it would bring them back. They're going to pay, Amy. Mason, don't do it. Look, Amy, I've got to do it. It's like, it's like a, a lump of hate inside of me that won't stop aching. Don't you see that? No. All I see is waste. Kin dead. A man spoiling to write something that can't be righted by more death. Dreams turning sour. Amy, you're asking me to forget. Yes, for me. Look, even if I tried and I can't, I'd never be good for you again. I'd taint everything I have. If I'm marked as a murderer, Amy, I won't hold you to your... I'm pledged to be your wife. I'll share what's ours. Have any idea which way them trappers were headed? You talk about Hank or Smith. Are they just passing through? I reckon they didn't say. Hi, Mason. Uh, what do you want with them, Mason? They have a pack horse. Well, they did. Stable it over to Hiram. Thanks. Yeah. Hey! You can watch that turkey now? Wrong time of day, you know. You know what they say, for the sun gets hot. Go on home, Israel. Did I say something wrong, Mason? I'm real sorry if I did. No, Israel, I just got some business to take care of, that's all. How are you, Mason? Fine. What can I do for you? Two men stable a pack horse here last night. That's right. Done? Uh-huh. A couple hours back. Headed where? Well, they didn't say. I'd guess Salem. They took the trail down that way. The wicked-looking pair of those two. If you're thinking of joining up with them, I wouldn't. Well, how are you, Israel? Fine. How are you? Now, don't ask a man over 50 that question. He will tell you. <laughs> that far enough, or do we go right on through to China? Well, what would we do in China? Dig a hole the other way and come home? Give me a hand. Come on. What are you doing, young man? Nothing. You do your chores? Yes, Pa. Pa, why is Mr. Mason going to Salem? I didn't know he was. He was asking Mr. Wilson about a couple of fellas. Mr. Wilson said they were wicked looking. They were headed for Salem. I thought he'd take time to reason this thing out. When a man got that kind of suspicion in him, he ain't gonna stop short of killing. Killing? You mean he's after those two? Hmm. Gabe, if we cut through Lincoln Gap, we can cut him off. But why, Paul? Why would Mr. Mason want to do it? Son, you go tell your ma that I'm off with Gabe. Now, wait a minute. If you don't want to tell me, you don't have to give me a chore. Israel, Mason thinks that those two men killed his ma and pa a long time ago. If they did, why are you stopping him? Because Mason could be mistaken. He wouldn't go after him unless he was sure, would he? Now, you run along and tell your ma. Let's go, Gabe.
Get up off of there. Let's keep moving. You can keep moving if you want. But I'm going to have me a little bite to eat and catch me a little nap. I told you I want to get as much space between me and Boonesboro as I can get before nightfall. Get going. I'll catch up. Oh, you've got less brains than that mule there. Why do you think he mentioned Selby? Well, now, I wouldn't know that. Would you? Now, let me remind you, Hanker. We left Cumberland on a mighty fast run. We're always leaving on a mighty fast run, and I'm getting sick and tired of it. You don't remember, huh? I don't remember nothing. That's why I can sleep so good. Listen to me. I'm moving fast. I'm getting rid of them pelts as soon as I get to Salem. With me, you get your share. You're not. It's your tough luck. Ease up once we're over that ridge. We got a right to do this, Boom? Do what? It's Mason's concern. Well, that's true enough. Put your nose in somebody else's business? Nine times out of ten, get your head shot off. Well, now, Gabe, you've seen it and so have I. Take a proud man, independent, gets into trouble and tries to work it out all by himself. And you've got... Two choices. One, you can stand aside and watch him suffer. Or you can give him a hand and try to work it out. Feel better? Yeah. All right, let's go. Myself. You know, there's a time for talking, and this ain't it. Jumpy with all your peering over your shoulder. Uh, I heard something. You're always hearing something. Put some grub into you. Come on. Huh? 
My name is Boone. Daniel Boone. Let me have yours. You out of your senses coming on us like this? Just cautious. I want to make sure your firearms are unloaded. What's your business? At the moment, saving your necks. Whether or not it's worth it, I can't say. I'm Hanker. He's Smith. And we look after our own necks. Mm -hmm. Prime pelts. Spring beaver. That's your top price in Boonesboro. We'll get more in Salem. Might be, but I doubt the trip will be worth the difference. Speak your mind. Well, I'm uh, suggesting that we take a little trip to Boonesboro. You're crazy. Well, that he ain't. But I'd like to hear the reason. Get the bottom of the Shelby matter. Shelby matter? What Shelby matter? That kid's just shooting off his mouth. That kid back there is a full-grown man with 15 years of hate boiling in his veins. He saw his own mother and father murdered before his eyes. So what? We never did it. He thinks you did. So he thinks we did. So what? No matter where you go or how far, he'll find you, track you down, and shoot you both. We can take care of ourselves. You don't get the point. Don't I? I'm thinking about him. I don't want to see him do this. I don't want to see him outside of the law. So your idea is we go back to Boonesboro, walk up to him and say, here we are, fire away. <laughs> I guarantee nothing will happen to you. Just what good is this going to do? It'll give us a chance to get to the bottom of this Shelby business. If you're not the man Mason Pruitt thinks you are, I'll buy you pelts and pay you double the price of them for your trouble. And if it turns out otherwise? Well, we haven't got much law, but we got enough for that. What if we say no? I reckon I'll have to get just a bit more persuasive. Spencer Move out of my way. Is Amy? Where's Mason? Oh, he's inside. He's all right. Now, don't worry. You can't keep me here forever, Gabe. Not Boone, not you, not nobody. Why don't you take it easy, Mason? Mason. Amy, get the stop out of the way. Stop it. You ain't going nowhere to Boone. Get here. Mason. Please! Mason! Wait outside, Dave. You sure you can handle this? I agreed to marry him, didn't I? Step back. Dave, Dave, your arm! Taking it with the wildcat. You're gonna get clawed. Come on over to the well, and I'll doctor it up for you, Gabe. Look, it's none of their business in the first place. Mason, be still. Jumping me on that trail, carting me back here like a sack of corn. What's going to do them no good, Amy? Because I'm going to get those two, and nobody's going to stop me. Daniel and Gabe did this for your own good. Yeah. Mason. Don't turn away from me. Daniel's brought those two men back to Boonesboro. He's bringing them here now. He says maybe this way we can get to the truth. But the truth is they killed my folks. That's the truth. You know that for a fact. Yeah, I know it. No room to be wrong. Amy, I know it. It's just that in a case like this, it's best to be double sure. For both our sakes. I talked to Daniel. I told him you'd listen. And you will. Won't you? Yes, Amy, I will for you. This 
a little chance he gave? A little. A lot. if you and these fellas had it out face to face. I've talked with them, and they're both willing to swear that they had nothing to do with killing your folks. Well, us two, they'd, they'd sell their mothers, and not only that, they'd deliver. Well, you got no cause to say that. You don't know us. You never met us before. And if you got any proof, you show it. Put it right there in the barrelhead. I don't need proof for them or you. That scar's good and sufficient for me. I saw it the night my folks was killed. It was like a fireball tearing through the sky. And I see it now, and I saw it then. And I'll tell you one thing. You're going to pay back, mister. Now, get him out of here, Daniel. I don't care what you told him. Just get him out. Take it easy, Mason. Daniel, I won't hear anymore. I'm going to my cabin, and I'm staying there till sun up. And then I'm coming out. And I got some advice for you. You stay out of my way, you hear? You think you can reason with that madman? You ought to be put in chains. You forced us here. If anything happens to us, it's on your head. Nothing's gonna happen. What do you want me to do with him, Boone? Take him to the powder house. Lock him up? And let them loose? Well, they're only accused of murder. Mason's aiming to spill blood. Oh, Mason. Come on, OK. Feeling good about this, Gabe? I have felt better. Sorry, Mason. Well, you'll get over it. Dan, you try. It's what they carve on tombstones. Becky, these gentlemen will be our guests. Any more of your good ideas? Be safe at our cabin. Oh, we know it. It'll be the only place we'll be safe. So you best get used to the idea, Boone. You got a couple of steady boarders. Fancy name. I got me a notion that a name ought to go with a face. Yours fits you just fine. I'm considering that. What would you think Smith's name ought to be? Kane. Israel. I know what you're thinking, Pa. They were just trying to be friendly, son. Like they were to Mason's mom, Pa? Israel, I reckon you've got your heart set on being a judge. Judge? Mm -hmm. It's a great calling. You seem to have a special knack for it. Looks to me like you think you can tell whether a man's good or bad just by reading his face. Well, I can tell it about them. Can you? Maybe you would prefer not to spend the night under the same roof with him. Suit me fine. All right, son. Israel! Come on! Daniel, what's Becky going to say about this? One good thing, whatever she says, it'll be in private. I saw him. The two they call Hank and Smith. And like you said, I could tell just by looking at him. Does your pa know you're here? I told him I wouldn't sleep under the same roof with him. Your pa took him in? If I was him, I'd throw him out like a pair of scurvy dogs. Going back to your pa, Israel. Well, I just came to tell you that. Well, 
I'm on your side. So is Paul. Sometimes I get the feeling that he's just too old to understand us younger men. Start on doing your bedding over there. Yeah. Israel, you got a spot over here by the fireplace, nice and warm for you. Where you been? To see the prisoner. You sound like you'd ask you'd been stopped. I don't want you to stop being Mason's friend's son. He's going to need all he can get. What he needs is some justice. And being cooped up is not your idea. Is that right? Maybe you've got the wrong one in there. It's possible. All kinds of mistakes a fellow can make. Some of them bigger than others. Like killing a man? Like killing the wrong man. And that's all. And what about it? I don't know. It all happened so fast. Israel said there were two men. Well, uh, there was this war hooping and screaming and hollering, and, and then two men they come out of the tavern. Did you recognize them? No, it was too dark. And before I knew it, they were gone. Israel, can you describe them, the two men that attacked Cincinnati? Well, one was tall, real tall. He had a bushy beard and buckskin shirt and... A hat. What kind of hat? Brown, green-like. What about the other one? What did he look like? Dan, don't force the boy if he can't remember. Do you remember, Israel? 
What did he look like? Well, uh, I... I don't remember. Try to. Did you ever see him before? Are you sure? Dan! It's important, Vicki. Israel, are you dead sure you never saw him before? Dead sure? It... It was Gabe. He... He came in whooping his head off. And he and the other fella started hitting Cincinnatus. And they stomped around and yelled and ran out. What... Why did you do it, Gabe? Israel, right here in front of everybody, I'm going to apologize. Apologize? I've taken advantage of you for purpose. For an important and very serious purpose. That makes it now. that Israel saw what he says he saw. Mason, do you believe him? I believe him, Daniel. Israel, you said the man that hit Cincinnati was tall. How tall? Well, uh... Tall as me? Yeah. And you said he had a bushy beard, right? And he wore a buckskin shirt, a round hat. What color hat? Green, I think. Mm -hmm. Wasn't much light, was it? No, but it was green. Maybe. Well, let's just see for sure. William, come on down. William, did you uh, buy Cincinnati? Yeah, in the manner of speaking. Is this him? Well, I don't know. Well, he says he is. And I guess he is. Well, now, considering the light and the fact that you were waking up out of a sound sleep and all the excitement going on, Israel, you didn't do too bad. William's not what I'd say is tall, but he does have a little rag mop mustache, no bushy beard, and he is wearing a buckskin shirt, and I reckon you could call the hat green. Thank you, William. Now, uh, this other fellow, one that you said was gay. It looked like him. Courtney, come on down. Sorry, Gabe. Oh, don't be sorry, Israel. You said what you thought was the truth, and that was no lie. Well, what about Cincinnati? Good as new. Israel! <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs> yep, I'm better than new. <laughs> you get the point, Mason? A young boy, terrified, upset, the whole world gone topsy-turvy. The mind plays tricks. The eyes play tricks. Daniel, I saw what I saw. In the dark, with things happening so fast? Look, I saw it. I didn't dream it. I saw that mark, and he was there, and it was there. You're a liar. Mason. Mason. You... Now, Mason, tell it to me again. Daniel, you think I get joy out of telling that? It turns me inside out. You're staking your whole life on this. Please, Mason. All right, for all the good it'll do. All right, you were hiding in the potato bin. And the house was on fire. All right, let's say the house was over here at the fireplace. Where would the potato bin be? Oh, over there. Over here. Now, when the man with a scar mounted his horse, where would that be? Somewhere in between. 
And you could see that with the light of the fire. Mm -hmm. Now, when he mounted the horse, did he ride off to the left or the right? Uh, the left. The left. And when he mounted the horse, did he mount from the left side the same way most folks would do? And he rode off to the left. Mm -hmm. Then that would mean that the only side of the man's face you could see would be this side. The left side. Yeah. The scar is on the right side. Oh, Daddle, he could have turned the horse around and got on the other side. I, it was a long time ago, about 15 years. I can't remember every detail. That's right, you can't, Mason. Nobody can. Time's blurred things up. You can't be sure of anything. But for what you're planning, you better be dead certain. Oh, let him go. You could have told me you were planning this. If I had, you wouldn't let me do it. You could have scared that boy out of five years' growth. Oh, he'll be eating pie off my head by the time he's 16. If he can still swallow without thinking about it. Well, it was Mason I wanted Israel to think about. And himself. Uh, all right, folks, uh, it's after closing time. Let's... Oh. You know, I don't think I made too good of a judge. Oh, the judging was all right. It was just the timing that was bad. You got to the verdict too quick. No, Pa, I've been thinking. Seeing isn't as simple as it looks. Square things with Becky Boone? Every time she looks at me, I get the idea that my eyebrows are singed. <laughs> I'll admit one thing. Until you prove that Mason was wrong about that scar, I was sure that Smith and Hanker were going to be condemned men. And wicked looking, like Mr. Wilson said, and like Israel believed. <laughs> I'll allow that there are times the innocent sure look grimy. Paul, look what Mason shot. Hey, are you sure about that, Israel? I saw him, and don't you try to tell me I didn't. <laughs> 